Today, we are joined by Republican incumbent Representative Russ Diamond and the Democratic challenger, Laura Quick, who is a former teacher. We do have some ground rules to cover. We have three issues. Each of you will get to respond and offer a rebuttal to your opponent's response. Responses will be limited to 45 seconds. Rebuttals, 30 seconds. To determine who answers first, we are using alphabetical order of your last names for the first two questions and a pre-debate coin flip for the third. So our first issue today is the state economy. Inflation continues to hit Pennsylvania residents really hard. What, if anything, can lawmakers do to help families make ends meet? Representative Diamond. Well, you know, the, the economy and the inflation is really driven by Democrat policy in Washington that we've seen over the last two years. There's not a whole lot that Pennsylvania General Assembly can do about inflation. What we can do, though, is make sure that we get out of business's way so they can create jobs and create good paying jobs so that Pennsylvanians can earn a living that affords and tries to keep up with inflation. But it's going to be very difficult because Harrisburg is not involved in the policy of the creation of money and the inflationary policy that, that the Democrats have given us from Washington, D.C. Ms. Quick, same question for you. Well, um, nationally, yes, um, th there's not a whole lot we can do to control what's going on in the national, but we can do things at the General Assembly level. And in fact, right now, the General Assembly is sitting on their hands a little bit with the idea of a, of a actually gas, gas tax holiday the fuel tax right now in Pennsylvania is the third highest in the, in the nation. And they have the ability to, to uh, give a little bit of a holiday and give people a tax break. And uh, I think they should need to go forward with that legislation. Representative Diamond, would you like 30 seconds? I think a gas tax holiday is a good idea worth talking about. However, you have to consider the implications of that down the road. We have roads and bridges that depend on that funding that are crumbling in, in Pennsylvania. So if we're gonna do that, and maybe we could do that, we gotta look at the long-term implications of doing that. And 30 seconds too, if you choose. Uh, you are actually, there is, there are bills right, presently right now in the General Assembly for this tax, tax cut holiday. And uh, there's a $7 billion surplus presently in the Pennsylvania budget. And the cost of a three-month tax holiday would be $950 million. We have money in the budget to do it, and it will not affect our, our roads and bridges. We are moving on to our second topic now. Several states are moving toward legalization of recreational marijuana. Should Pennsylvania do that also? Ms. Quick? Um, I, I believe that um, marijuana is something that is very good for our, especially our, our veterans who suffer from PTSD. We have people who uh, have medical purposes for chemotherapy, and um, I would be very much for moving it off Schedule 1 federally. Recreationally, I think we need to talk about laws in place governing just like we do with alcohol. You know, we should not be able to drive impaired. We should not have, uh, you know, just, it just shouldn't be the wild, wild west when it comes to these type of things. But I, 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 I would strongly uh, move towards uh, setting up some type of recreational as long as it's passed already in the, in the federal office schedule one. Same question to you. I would oppose it right now. In 2016, as a freshman legislator, I was instrumental in getting the medical marijuana law passed in Pennsylvania. The people who are gonna profit from recreational marijuana are the same people who are involved in the medical marijuana program. And quite frankly, I don't believe that industry has lived up to the expectations that we had for the patients uh, who we uh, tried to serve with that. We, the, 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 the crown jewel of that bill was a clinical research portion, and that has just not come up. We've also got problems with labeling consistency from product to product and product availability in Pennsylvania. I am going to pin it on that industry to to make those things better for our patients that we made a promise to in 2016 before we reward them. We're going to have to stop you here. You will have an additional 30 seconds. 30 seconds to you, Ms. Quick. I, I think a lot of those initiatives are good, and I, I, I concur with a lot of the, the, you should make a path forward carefully and consider all options, and I think that's a very good idea that he has. Would you like an additional 30 seconds to continue your comments? Yeah, you know, a, a lot of people say, oh, we can raise so much money uh, from uh, recreational marijuana, but 
Revenue generation for the state does not move my needle one iota on this. I am going to stand with the patients that we stood for in 2016 and demand that the industry and the Department of Health treat them properly. All right, our third and final topic today, property taxes used for school funding, but also a burden for many homeowners. What can be changed? And Ms. Quick won the coin flip, so you will begin. Uh, right now, uh, presently, our General Assembly is, is proposing something, but it's not um, a property tax reform as much as a replacement by replacing property tax with higher state income tax, higher sales tax, and, re and uh, taxing retirement. I propose something that would be more along the lines of we need to look at re take a good look at our rebate program. Let's uh, increase these, these um, eligibility requirements. We also need to have some ideas maybe outside of the box of, of a sliding scale for our, for, our, um, for our people on fixed incomes and uh, have real tax reform. Same question to you. Well, Pennsylvania's, the property taxes in Pennsylvania take, uh, collect $16 billion for our school systems. The pro I have always favored eliminating property tax because it's the most expensive and most unfair system of taxation we have in Pennsylvania. However, the argument comes with what do you want to replace it with? And how do you want to replace it? Do you want a sales tax? Do you want an income tax? And those two systems in Pennsylvania are also very convoluted. So it gets down to, we have to take a holistic look if we want to do something about property taxes, because we have to treat every property owner equally in Pennsylvania under the Pennsylvania Constitution. An additional 30 seconds. It's very true that we, we, need, to, uh, we need to address this uh, fairly for all, for all people involved, but replacing with you know, by, by bringing more taxes, especially sales tax, that, that always is a regressive tax and taxes those people with the lowest incomes. We need real reforms like a sliding scale for, for seniors and people on fixed incomes. We need to maybe possibly, even after a certain age, those, se those same seniors would be able to uh, be, have no tax liability whatsoever. And the final 30 seconds, Representative Diamond. We already have a sliding scale in, in Pennsylvania with a, a, a property tax rent reduction program, which we did increase this year for, for seniors and, and low income folks. Um, we can't treat, however, with a broad program, we can't treat senior citizens any differently than working Pennsylvanians under the constitution. We have to treat every citizen and property owner equally. Well, thank you both for coming today. We really appreciate you sharing your thoughts on these issues and these debates will continue throughout this election season.